Yo, what's up? It's Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to rebind a report that's using a cash or import model to an analysis services live connection. Stay tuned. All right, so rebinding a cash model, a report that's using a cash model to a live analysis services connection? Can you do that? Of course you can. So um, you remember my data silos video. I hope all you guys remember my data silos video. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. So many people are just taking a PBIX file, copying it, and then building new reports on top of the model that's cached up in it. And then if I need to add a measure or calculate a column or change the relationships or make any modifications to the model, you gotta go through each one and do that. Don't do it, stay away from it. I promise you, it's not a good idea. So I was chatting with a couple of, of my colleagues, Dustin, Steve, and Hope, what's up you guys? And we were chatting about that and Dustin actually went out and wrote a blog post, you can go check him out at sqldusty.com where he kind of hacked through the PBIX file to change that connection. Um, at the bottom of his blog post, he says, this is not supported by Microsoft. So if you walk through these steps and you break something, don't call Microsoft, ain't gonna help you. All right, so can you do this in a supported way? Of course you can do this in a supported way. And guess what? I'm about to show you. All right, so what's the best way for me to show you? You guys know how I like to do. Let's head over to my laptop. All right, let's say, let's say you got this report. This report right here got this report it's using a cash model you've imported the data and you want to start building other reports similar to this based on this model okay and you may need to make some changes some modifications to it and you only want to host this model in one place all right the reports this report and many other reports that you've copied and paste are already published up to parbi.com um but before you've realized I'm creating data silos and Patrick said, don't do it. And you wanna stop that. You wanna stop the proliferation of data silos. And you go, you know what? I wanna take my model, convert it to some type of central model. Let's, let's just, you know, for the purpose of this video, let's say analysis services. You wanna take that model, convert it to a, a tabular model, host it on Azure AS or analysis services on premises. And you wanna bind all your reports to that model. And so when we were having a the conversation, they were like, we got, I gotta rebuild all these reports to point to my new model. No, you don't. Um, so I'm gonna show you how you can just get around all that stuff pretty quickly. So what I first, I, the first thing I would do is do a file save as, save this as a separate file, okay? So I've already done that. Save that as a separate file, then I delete all the pages out of that report. By default, it's gotta have that one page, so you'll leave that page there. Okay, and then I save this. Then I go out to Azure Analysis Services and create an instance of Azure AS, and then you'll see an option for Web Designer. Choose Open, and that'll open up in a different tab in your web browser. And then right here it says Models, click Add, and then I'm gonna call this At Risk, and then point to that PBIX file that only contains the model, and it's gonna take that model, convert it to a tabular model, and then you're ready to go. You have your central place. Don't make any changes to it. Don't modify it, don't change it prior to rebinding your reports. And so if you go make some changes, delete some columns and stuff, you could break things. So before you decide you're gonna you know, mess with stuff, rebind your reports. I'm gonna show you that in a little bit, hang on. All right, so once it's uploaded, you'll get a model and you see my models right there already. So I'm gonna head back just to the portal. You can see my model, it's right there. So I have my model. And then the next thing I do is I go here and I copy my connection string. I open up the desktop, choose some get data, go to more, hang on, go to Azure, Azure Analysis Services, click connect, pop in the server name. I ain't gonna worry about the database. Make sure you're connected live, click okay. It's gonna prompt you to authenticate. That's all right, definitely get authenticated. I'm all authenticated up. It's gonna say which model. Which model do you want? I'm gonna choose my at-risk model. because that's the one I just uploaded. Click OK. And now I have my connection. Now, why did you do this? Well, because I need to get that model up to PowerBI.com. If, hey, product team, I need you guys to do me a favor. It would be great if I can come here to PowerBI, select Get Data, choose Databases, hang on and Azure AS showed up right there. It doesn't right now, I'm guessing these guys are working on it. If you're not, 
go do it, right? If this was on-prem AS, it would show up with my gateway configured and everything, but it's not there. So because I don't have that option, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Power BI desktop to publish, get that live connected data set out there. I don't need the gateway because this is in Azure, right? They already know about each other, so I don't have to use the gateway to get all connected up. And so I'm gonna go ahead and click publish. I've already done this, so I'll publish this data set out to PowerBI.com. So I'm gonna go over to my portal, to Power BI, to the service. I'm gonna go to my workspace. I have a workspace here called At Risk Live, and you'll see the data sets there, but it also published a report. That's because by default, there's a blank page. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this report. I don't need this report. Got it? You guys following my step so far, right? Took my model, uploaded it to Azure AS, went to Power BI Desktop, created a live connection, published just that, no reports, anything up to um, that new workspace. So now I have two workspaces. I have one where my cash models and my cash reports are, and I have one where my live model and my live reports are. All right, so now I got all that done, right? I'm excited about this. So I got my workspace with my cash report. Let me show you my cash report. Here's my cash report. I'm gonna open it up. You guys will see it looks just like the report on premises. In my desktop, if I click view related, it'll show it's related to the cash report data set. If I go to settings, you'll see that, you know, hey, you don't need a gateway because this is an Azure database, Azure SQL database, um, but I can definitely schedule a refresh of it because I need to reach back to Azure SQL database and pull all that data up to get it cached in the back end in Power BI, right? I don't want to do that. I don't want to have a cache model. I want to connect up to that live Azure AS, let it go to the data warehouse and I can automate all the processing and everything that needs to be done, all right? To do that, there's a nice and tidy PowerShell script that you can use to get all this stuff done with. So what you have to do, right, you can go here and this will allow you to clone your report and rebind it to a different data set. So what you wanna do is the first thing is go find the resource group and the location of the existing report. So what I'm gonna do is in my cache model, I'm gonna go to my report, click on it, and in the ribbon, First thing I'm gonna do is grab my group. And I'm gonna go back to the PowerShell. Paste that there. And then the next thing I need to do is go get the report. Don't get the report section part, copy that. And then I'm gonna go over here to PowerShell and paste that in, all right? Perfect. And then the next thing I wanna do is get, um, go down to the next section. I'm gonna tell it the new report name. It can be the exact same report name. Then I need to get the group ID and the data set ID for the new live connected data set. So all I need to do is go out to my live workspace and go to the data set and go to settings and back in the URL, grab the group. Got the group, gonna hit and paste that in. And then go to my data set, grab that. I need to get the F, make sure I get the F there and paste that in, All right? And then the final thing you need to do is go to dev.parbi.com.apps. You can see that right here and get signed in, give it a the native app a name, and then in the PowerShell script, it tells you what to put in there for your rede redirect URL. Be sure you copy it the way, exact same way, including the URN, paste that in the valid rede redirect URL, check these two boxes right here, and register your app. It's gonna give you a GUID back, go back out to your PowerShell script, paste that GUID in there, for the client ID, and now you're ready to go, right? So what's gonna happen when I run this PowerShell script, it's gonna copy that report from one workspace into another workspace with the name I specified for that workspace, and then it's gonna rebind it to the data set that I've provided the GUI for, all right? So let's go ahead and run this. Yep, go ahead and save. It's gonna give me a prompt. It says authenticate, I'm gonna authenticate. And in a few short seconds, head back over to Power BI. In my at-risk space, there's my report. Just like that, 
my reports moved over. If I click on view related, you can go to the settings of this particular data set. And now you can see there's nothing about refreshing anything, just about the cache, which is great. I can schedule a refresh of my cache. Now I've taken that report or all those reports, repointed them to my live connected, my Azure AS. Now I can go modify my model in one place and all those reports would just pick up those changes. So what do you guys think? How are you doing this today? Have you ran across this? Are you just recreating your reports as you centralize this into your models? I don't know. If you are, don't do it. I'd like to know what you're doing. What do you think about the video? What do you think about this approach? Post it in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting the Guy, Guy in the Cube channel, please be sure to subscribe. If you like my video, give it a big thumbs up. And as always from Adam and Patrick, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Yeah.